One short year after One Missed Call 2 hit screens in Japan, the series was closed out once and for all when Toho released One Missed Call Final. Once more, the film was based upon a novel written by Yasushi Akimoto, released one month prior to the movie. And once again, the novel was adapted for the screen by Minako Daira, this time with the assistance of Jiro Shin. As it turns out, Shin is quite elusive, with this being the only film to his name. The studio also kept the tradition of changing directors with Final, this time selecting Manabu Aso. Most of Aso's previous work had been in television dramas, including the 2005 adaptation of One Missed Call, which sadly has yet to make its way stateside officially. Today's project was only Aso's second feature film, but it helped secure his name in cult J-horror circles, even if the bulk of his work has since reverted to television. Surprisingly, Final did better than the second film at the box office, though neither sequel performed as well financially as the first. This could be for any number of reasons, due to effective marketing, brand hype following the television drama so closely in time, or perhaps international attention thanks to Final cribbing one of the main elements from One Missed Call 2. Where the second film could be called derivative of the first, it at least offered a change of scenery by introducing locations and characters based in Taiwan. Final more or less lifts this idea wholesale and uses it for different means, replacing Taiwan with South Korea. Another international star was brought on as well, who takes one of the lead roles here. What may be notable between two and final though is that this time around, the time spent in Korea is more or less the bulk of the film, not just the second half as in two. This time around, we kicked the film off with a girl named Pam committing suicide after being bullied by her classmates. At least, she tries to kill herself, but ends up in a coma at a local hospital instead. Pam's close friend, Asuka, forces a curse on the other kids from school when the whole class is on a trip to Busan, Korea. The cursed phone messages received by the students this time around involve photos, not just voicemails as in previous entries. They also have a new mechanic built in, with the ability to forestall death by forwarding one's message to someone else. As it turns out, one of the classmates in Busan, Emiri, is friends with Asuka and tries to stop the killing using this connection. Her plot also revolves around meeting and working with her boyfriend, a young deaf man. Part of the attraction of this trip for Emiri was the ability to finally see her boyfriend after communicating with him online for so long. Later in the film, thanks to Emity, we learn that, plot twist, Pam is Asuka, with the name Pam being a rude nickname based on the term spam, which denotes Asuka's unwanted status among her classmates. Jumping back in time, we find that Emity was the one who was actually bullied and that Asuka defended her. As a result, Emity's bullying was deferred to Asuka. Together, Emity and her boyfriend worked together to fight against Asuka and Mimiko, hoping to stop the spread of their curse before it finds yet another avenue of dispersal. In terms of substance, One Missed Call Final is more of the same of what was on offer in the first two films. It's basically the same story, with attempts to modify the formula by introducing minor new elements. The cell phone photos and videos play into this, as does Jin Oh's presence in Busan. Final is not interested in looking to the past as with the previous entry, however. This time around, we're only looking to the future, with Lili being replaced by Asuka and Pam, their connection to the other films primarily being through Mimiko and her curse. Stylistically, on the other hand, this one is a bit different. Final almost feels like it's borrowing more from Ring and Final Destination, with how it builds tension and leads to fairly gruesome ends for certain characters. This film is not as cartoonish as Miike's take on death in the first film, which could be called equally macabre. That film, however, had more of a sense of humor in its gross-out factor, where Final is more so interested in suspense and flashy visuals, making it more gritty than the first film, but far less subtle than the second film. Narratively, Final is clever in how the film reveals the truth about the connection between Pam and Asuka. In this case, the film obscures the actual events of the past for a while. It leads us to believe that these two are different people through how their scenes are shot in obscurity, and with how characters talk about them. Early on, we might get the sense that they have some sort of connection, but we're not directly made to question whether they're one and the same. In the end, this makes the reveal about their shared existence surprising. It's nothing unheard of in horror, but it gets the job done, making it at least notable. 
The ending to Final is as shocking as the reveal about Yumi and Yamashita at the conclusion of the first film, though this time around the proceedings are significantly less confusing and baffling than Miike's own ending, drawing a nice bow on the entire trilogy. Before we go, there's something we came across in our research that we found interesting enough to mention here, that being how sign language is used in One Missed Call Final. As you may know, for a period of almost four decades during Japan's imperial period, Japan occupied the Korean Peninsula. This goes the same for Taiwan, with their occupied period lasting about 50 years. These were only two of many, many nations controlled in whole or part by Imperial Japan. But for the purposes of discussing sign language, we're interested in Korea and Taiwan. During this period, Japan, Korea, and Taiwan were all beginning to codify and standardize their systems of sign language. We wondered about this while first watching Final, given that Emidy and her boyfriend can so easily communicate with one another throughout the film. Admittedly, he's shown to speak through text as well over SMS, but he's also shown to be a sign language teacher in Korea, indicating that he uses Korean sign language rather than Japanese sign language. It's been reported that Taiwanese sign language, Korean sign language, and Japanese sign language have not only a huge amount of vocabulary overlap, but that those who speak each of these sign systems shouldn't have much issue communicating with one another. And this is likely thanks, at least in part, to the period during which each country created their own sign language system. Overall, most would call, and in fact many critics have called, the One Missed Call series unremarkable. Some will argue that it's filled with cliches from the J-horror boom, and a number of predictable points if you've seen any films of this type before. To some, One Missed Call may seem derivative of not only other Japanese horror projects, but even of themselves. Given that two and final are so similar, we can see that only a few elements have been swapped between them, like trading Taiwan for Korea and the past for the future. However, taken on their own, each film is more or less a practice in style over substance. They're basically all the same movie when reduced to plot points on a page. In truth, they all have different levels of escalation and globality, incorporating actors and locales from across the sea, as well as their own unique styles. They're worth a watch if you're a fan of films from the era, as their cliché nature more or less means that they might not be the paragon of the era, but that they are perfect representations of the movement. Let us know below which of these films is your favorite, and what about it stands out to you over the others. And if you haven't seen them yet, give this trilogy a watch. It won't be the deepest thing you've ever experienced, but it's enjoyable nonetheless.